Okay, so how do we get through the ball here properly? Weight forward, arms straight, head back. I've yet, there's lots of different combinations of golf swing. I've yet to see a golfer who demonstrates this position perfect in their follow through that does not hit the ball solid day in and day out. Never have seen it. Hey guys, today I wanna to talk to you about the hanger training aid. I absolutely love this. I firmly believe that this is good for every single golfer. This hanger here creates and controls what I think is the most important part of the swing, which is the wrist angle. It snaps right on. It takes me probably 30 seconds to put on. I can put it right in my golf bag. And best of all is you can hit balls with it. You can actually hit balls with it. So I love this hanger training aids. Look at when I do that well, how that sits on my forearm. Now watch when I cut my wrist, how that comes off immediate feedback for where my wrist angle is at. No one that can have too flat of a left wrist. One of the few things that all good ball strikers have we're trying to have, flat left wrist, right? Super easy to use, incredible immediate feedback with the coupon code gorgonogolf.com. It's only $59. You're gonna absolutely love it. We'll put all the details down in the description down below. So one of the most important parts of the swing and something that we're training in at kagornogolf.com all the time with the online lessons I do is what you do through the ball and into the finish position. And what you do through the ball into your finish is gonna have a direct correlation on what you're able to do at impact and what happens earlier. And as a matter of fact, if I went across all of our members and all the golfers I worked with over the past 15 years or so, there'd be a one-to-one -one correlation with what they look like through the ball and how consistently they're able to hit the shots, how good their contact is, and their overall scoring. Here's the take home. The best ball strikers have the arms the straightest with the head back over the golf ball. The worst ball strikers I work with have the head the most forward with the arms the most bent. So we wanna to get to here, we want to avoid here. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that and how to practice that next. Okay, so how do we get through the ball here properly? Now, I've got a little station set up that I'd like for you to set up and practice just to feel this um, as well. Or if you don't have something, just imagine you have this here. Basically, what you want to do is have a wall or imagine a wall over your left shoulder. And during the downswing, I want your head to be able to stay back of that as you stretch your arms away. Okay, so this is the mantra I want you to take it home from here. The weight still goes forward. The arms are straight, but the head is back. Now, why that's so important when I come through to be able to keep my arms more extended, allows me to get the handle more forward, present some shaft lean, hit the ball first, ground second, all those pieces. Now, I can keep my head going forward to help me doing that, but at some point in time, as my head goes too far forward, I run into two problems. Number one from the face on is I actually start hitting too far down on the golf ball too steep of an angle of attack, big divots, et cetera, shorter distance. And from the down the line camera, when my head goes too far forward, my club path gets too far over the top or outside in. So I want the arm straight for the contact, the consistency of contact. I can do that and have my head go forward and hit the ball first ground second, but I'm always gonna be too steep in terms of angle of attack, and I'm always gonna be too far over the top in terms of my club path. So why I want to have my head more back is to be able to neutralize those two pieces. I want to be able to keep my arms straight and my elbows close for contact, but I need to be able to keep my head back so that that shallows the angle of approach, the club head. So the club head's working lower into the golf ball, more like a U shape than a V shape. And from down the line, keeping my head back allows me to get the club path working from inside. So that's really the secret sauce if there is. Weight forward, arms straight, head back. I've yet, there's lots of different combinations of golf swing. I've yet to see a golfer who demonstrates this position perfect in their follow through that does not hit the ball solid day in and day out. Never have seen it. I see lots of golfers head forward, arms bent, hips back, inconsistent contact. So listen, I've tried lots of different training routines for this. And the one that I found work best is the one I'm gonna show you, which basically is you eliminate the backswing, learn how to get to that follow through position and you incrementally add the backswing in. This is the way to do this. If you've got a at home practice station or you're looking for more consistent contact, perfect drill. Now I've got this little noodle here by my ear. You can take two alignment rods, duct tape them together, put it to your golf bag, put the alignment rods, driveway markers through the ground. You can do like a bender ball, something that's over your lead shoulder. 
So what I suggest when we do at CorgonoGolf.com typically is like 20 to 30 reps per practice session in terms of just mechanics. And we always do two rehearsals, hit a ball, check on video. That's the secret sauce. Two rehearsals, hit a ball, check on video. So what I would have you doing if we were working together would be number one, with no backswing, have this here, rehearse your follow through. Push the butt of the club away from you. The arms are straight. My weight's forward, so my hips are over my ankle and my head is back. That's one rehearsal. Same thing, no backswing. Push the arms away, head stays back, chest is up, hips forward, arms are straight, that's two. Now with the golf ball, I would start with just a push. I'm gonna feel the same thing, I'm just gonna push the ball down the range. That would be one rehearsal. Okay, that probably looks a little bit different than what you do when you're practicing, right? A Little bit more deliberate. So I would do that pushing down the range, okay? Now let's just pretend and fast forward that I did that about five times, which is what I would do. Now the next set of five, what I would do is start to add the backswing in. So now I have my same setup. I'm gonna get the club about parallel to the ground. And now in my rehearsals, I'm gonna clip the grass with the club head and still feel the same thing. Heads back, arms pushed away, hips are forward. I'm trying to get my body fully turned, you know, the knees, just I'll add some little details as we go, the knees, the hips, the chest, the shoulders are fully squared towards the target. That's one rehearsal. Back to here, clip the turf, same thing, head back, arms extended, body fully turned. Then I'd come in, I'd do it with a golf ball. Two rehearsals, and then I'd hit one. Get the club back to parallel to the ground, and just clip one out. And I'd feel those same sort of pieces. Now that one I was a little bit off balance, I didn't hit perfect. I'd say, okay, that was rep number one. Let me get in there and do that again. All right, I'm giving myself feedback with the video. Head back, hips forward, arms pushed away. And I would feel the same thing twice, go back to club parallel to the ground, and just feel the same thing. That was a better strike. Arms are extended, heads back, body's fully turned. Right, that'd be two reps, and then I go in. And I miss hit one there, you're gonna miss hit some too, that's fine. You wanna train this motion in. Now again, let's fast forward and pretend I did five of those. So now I'm 10 reps in and I haven't made anything more than a little takeaway. Now you'll notice when I hit, there's a little bit of momentum before you go, that's fine. Then I go to left arm parallel. Left arm parallel, clip the ground, keep the head back, push, push the arms away. The more your head goes forward, the more your arms are gonna be close to you. You wanna feel like your head goes back and you're pushing away, like someone's pulling the club head and the butt of the club farther from you and your upper body's working back to be able to resist that. But as I'm doing that, I don't have my hips back. My hips and my weight are still forward. Why do I want to keep my head back that's going to shallow my angle of attack and help me swing more from inside? Okay, as I'm still able to get my contact. So I would do that to left arm parallel, two rehearsals. I'd go back, feel the same thing, left arm parallel, and feel the same thing into the follow through. Arms feel straight, heads back, hips forward, body's fully turned. If you could train in one piece to get your consistency overall day to day, it would be this. Now, Listen, there's some things that can go on earlier in your swing that could cause this to happen that you're making up for. I fully understand that. But while you're fixing those, which you have to fix anyway, you might as well train this in. So a lot of practice plans that I do, this would be like the first half of the practice. Five reps just the push, five reps from here through, meaning club parallel, five reps from left arm parallel, and then I go full swing. And you only go as fast as you can perform the motion correctly, you know, 20, 30, 40% speed. If you guys are members, you've heard me say that to you. And then once you get it at 20, 30% speed, you go up a little faster, a little longer, a little faster, a little longer. But the same thing eventually with the full swing. Object over my left um, shoulder, feeling the same pieces. How do I transition to a full swing? I just feel like I'm going through that same spot. Head back, arms extended. Head back, arms straight. Now, what you should notice if you're not used to that is, now hit that really solid, that ball's gonna go higher than normal. So if you're used to going here, forward, with the arms bent, you're gonna hit low shots, typically pulls, fades. These balls from here are gonna wanna want launch higher than normal, and they're gonna feel very solid. Now, again, if you do that full swing, full speed, and that's too much, just slow it down. So five here, five here, five here, that'd be 15 reps, be a beautiful way to start um, your practice. And this would apply whether you're doing a wedge, a seven iron, a driver, etc. We'll do one more. So I'm trying to feel head back, arm straight. When I'm feeling head back, let's say this, just a little add-on piece. Sometimes I like to put a stick or a club in line with the golf ball. So I have a visual of like a wall here. 
So I'm trying to feel like my head stays back where the ball is as my arms push straight, head back, arms straight. Train it to that position and then eventually just allow yourself to fold your arms up. So head back, arms straight. Yeah, beautiful. So huge differentiator between handicaps, ability levels across the board. Head back, arm straight is good. Head forward, arms bent is bad. That's how I'd practice it. I'd sequence it like that. If you want help with your swing, you're struggling with contact, consistency, you want to shoot better scores this year, go to kagoragolf.com, do the free 14-day trial, send in your swings. I'm going to personally analyze them, identify what your priorities are, and build you out of practice like you can do right at the comfort of your own home. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below.